Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 32. This one is an infused carbon and cork thin panel. It's got a light spread toe skin on each side of 2 millimeter 200 kilogram core cork. Here's a look at the laminate schedule. You can see I did a little prediction based on the data sheet how much resin it would take. It appears it took a good bit less. Here is a look at the cork. It's this 2 millimeter, 200 kilo cork. It's really good at absorbing impact. It doesn't behave really the same way as a lot of other more common core materials. Cork does have some compelling properties that make it worth considering. Go to impact resistance and resistance to denting and crushing, vibration dampening. Now we're going to compare it to some other more common materials with charts. You can see nothing remarkable. Uh, it compares more with a much lower density of soric than it does favorably to balsa or foam. And one neat thing about it is that it comes with built-in perforations. So I'm going to lay up on this somewhat polished Mike 6 aluminum plate. The material list is here. I've put the masking tape around the outside to protect an area for the bag to land from the release because this is such a shiny surface that the sealant tape won't stick unless it's left uncoated. And I've got that first ply of the hex ply spread toe down. It's beautiful stuff. And here goes the cork. And because this core has got natural perforations randomly through it, um, up, probably up to about four or five millimeters thick, the resin is going to be able to find its way through. And so this is it for the layup. Drop some peel ply on here. This is a polyester peel ply. Probably not the ideal choice, but I'm testing it out. And um, it provides an interesting alternative to a coated nylon somewhere in between an uncoated nylon and a coated one in terms of how easy it is to release. But a coated peel ply would be better here because this Encafusion nylon flow media that I'm putting on over the top is going to soak up a lot of resin. And it would be better to have a really easy release even if you have to double peel ply. Putting down the feed side is just a piece of spiral wrap with peel ply wrapped around it. And when I bag this, I'll pull the hose up into a pleat. And this is a piece of MTI hose. I'm going to cut to length so it's not too long. And that is laying right on top of the end of the panel. So on top of the laminate instead of with a vacuum brake or resin brake. And here I'm peeling the tape off and putting that sealant tape right at the edge. The idea here is to avoid any un unreleased area of the table that could get resin flash on it. But at the same time, not stick the sealant tape down to the release coated area. And the bag is going on here. I'm going to pleat it only along the edge the hoses pass through, making symmetrical pleats in line with the hoses so that the bag stays nice and square. You always want to keep your bag symmetrical. Here I am building a little pleat in there by placing some extra sealant tape inside and applying it to the bag and then pulling the backer off of it and forming a pleat in place over that hose. This is an easy place to cause a leak around hoses going through bags. So it uh, pays to give yourself some extra room. And I'll do another very similar pleat down at the other end where the vacuum side hose goes through. This is a very straightforward bag. And I will pull it down the vacuum. The spiral wrap is coming up in a pleat. So there's peel ply that goes down and makes contact. And I'll be able to use that as a throttle when I'm running resin in. The MTI hose is sitting directly on the end of the panel with the flow mesh held back 
just to allow the bottom bleed out air without getting choked off. So there it is up in the pleat. And I pulled with this little tiny vacuum pump, a fairly good vacuum. And here is the setup with resin ready to go. So I'm going to crack open the feed line here. And you'll be able to see the resin flow fill the spiral wrap, but then not go down quickly into the panel because that spiral wrap is still up in a pleat. And because it's now wet with resin, I can squeeze the pleat and move the spiral wrap down to make contact with the surface and the resin starts to flow into the laminate. This is a really nice way to easily make a throttleable feed system. And here you can see it's gotten away ahead on that far side so I just pull up in a pleat and that allows the resin to re-equalize there. Looking up close there's a lot of bubbles and these bubbles are coming out of the cork even way behind the flow front so I have to imagine that cork holds a lot of air and we'll just have to hope that comes out. So the feed front here, the flow front, is sort of equalized. I've been playing with pulling that pleat up and down in different places to try and get it to flow very uniformly. It's a little bit of race tracking around the edge of the panel, you can see. But this MTI hose that it's about to hit is, allows air through, but it doesn't allow resin through. So even if the resin is fully up against the hose, it's still going to allow the air to escape. And so the idea here, you can see this pleat with the hose pulled up in it. There's no more resin flowing through. And you can see the resin filling in around that MTI hose. And the bubbles stopped flowing, but there was still a lot in that flow mesh. And here's the final filled part. And I did dial the vacuum back to about half in hopes of keeping some of the moisture and bubbles under control. So the next day, I came back and demolded this and it looked like the seal and tape stuck very nicely around the perimeter and there was no resin flash. The MTI hose is still very flexible and here's a look at the panel. It looks really nice. There's no air, there's no porosity. It's nice and tight. And while there is still a bunch of air in the surface flow, it does not look like there is air in the top surface of the panel. It looks really good. So here it is, trimmed out to one square foot, roughly 300 millimeters on a side. And the peel ply side, you can see the surface looks nice. There is print from the flow media and the spread toe because it's wide flat toes you can see cork through uh, which is cosmetically not ideal having cork exposed like that but in this case it just shows the geometry of the fabric and how that works and the thickness is 2.4 millimeters weight 126 grams or 4 and 3 eighths ounces These are some similar panels. This is laminate sample number 24. It is a three millimeter core with the same spread toe skins. Much stiffer, much more carbon-like, but not as tough. And the same core with 200 gram e-glass. Similar stiffness to the cork and carbon. And probably the most appropriate comparison here is this two millimeter Soric from laminate sample number three. And this same thickness, similar kind of performance, but it does not have the impact resistance the cork will have and is way heavier. Here you can see my resin mismatch. It turns out it used quite a bit less resin than it was supposed to. 
and some close-ups of the panel. You can see the cork showing through, but the nice tight spread toe surface. It's an interesting panel, perhaps more of a solution looking for a problem than something that you can apply to a lot of stuff specifically, but it's a neat way to look at the material. And with the carbon, it does potentially provide a degree of toughness with stiffness while still being pretty light that could be compelling for things that need to resist damage but also be light and the idea of the core being a natural material harvested from a tree is appealing for a lot of good reasons thank you for checking it out